Hey everybody, welcome back for another game break. I don't know about you, but I've been spending a disgusting amount of time uh, watching this donation tracker go up. It's, it's, I don't want to know how much time I've spent just looking at my phone and watching the numbers go up and, and not even doing anything else, just literally watching them. Um, but I got to say, I'm having a lot of fun with this Kickstarter. It almost feels like it's December and we have like almost a sweek it in advent calendar because it seems like we're pretty much meeting a stretch goal every day. And it just, it's awesome to see something new being added to this game and to know that the game is going to be more rich, more enjoyable, more things to do, more characters to get to know. Oh, it's just, it's, it's been a great month so far. Oh, honestly, for the roller coaster ride that 2020 has been, you know, at least, at least we have this, this, this say, this has salvaged a lot of 2020 for me. Um, just knowing that we have this to look forward to in the future. And even if it turns out to be a bad game, at least we had fun, you know, taking the journey to get there. Right. But I really don't think that this will be a bad game given everything that the creators have said so far and how they want to essentially elevate Kickstarter by giving a great example of how to do a Kickstarter right. You know, they, they, they've acknowledged multiple times in the, in the comment section that they, they've seen failed Kickstarters, they understand people's frustration, and they, they just want to do right by this platform. And they, you know, they saw what happened with Koji in the Bloodstained Kickstarter and how you know, Koji was able to, you know, get a new lot in life, literally from the success that his Kickstarter had and he delivered a good game and they just want to do the same thing. So I, I am more than happy to support them. And if these guys fail or fuck us over, which I don't think they will, I, I will be like a lover scorned one too many times and I will never be able to trust again. If I am fucked over by the Suikoden team, I will never I will never trust in a Kickstarter again. And I'll have a hard time just trusting in video game developers again, period, if these guys do it, just because it's so important to me. But having said that, I really don't think that's going to happen. And I think we're going to have a good game. A lot of people in the comments section for this are asking, you know, they're like, oh, I want a new Sweet in 2. You know, I want it to exceed Sweet in 2. It's like, I don't know if it will. I think, you know, a more realistic expectation is maybe more of like a Sweet in 1 scenario because so much of what made Sweet in 2 great is it built on what came before it. You know, character cameos, being able to recruit the main protagonist from the first game, you know, plot threads that were unresolved in the first game being resolved in the second game. You know, that just so much of what made two great was, you know, was the legacy that one built. So I feel like for myself personally, anyway, I'm expecting more of a sweet kid in one, you know, type experience, type of experience. And that is by no means a bad thing. Sweet kid in one is a fucking fantastic game. It la laid the foundation for the entire franchise. And, oh, I would love to play a new, another sweet kid in one. And I hope this game surpasses it too. Uh, based on everything that they hope to implement in the game. But anyway, so for this video, I'm going to go over everything we've learned from the past eight days of this Kickstarter. Um, new information that's come to light via interviews. Um, they've even dropped like some tidbits in the comment section, like the moderator for the comment section in this Kickstarter is doing a fantastic job. I'm super impressed. And I'll just, you know, we'll have a bit of a discussion. I'll give you my thoughts on some of the things that have been said so far. And uh, let's do it. So there's quite a bit of information to cover given how successful the Kickstarter has been in not only the first handful of days, but the first handful of hours. A lot of stretch goals have been met. So I'll definitely talk about those, give you my thoughts, you know, have a bit of a discussion. And there's also been, you know, some developer interviews with Murayama. Uh, there's been updates posted on the Kickstarter. We've got new character art, you know, new uh, details on gameplay. So there, there's a lot to go over and I'm happy to go over it with you. So uh, we'll get started, okay? So the first thing I'll talk about is they've addressed platinum rewards in the game or premium rewards and you know they don't 
you know, they don't want it. So, you know, Billy Bob 6969 comes up to you and starts talking to you in between story beats and breaks your immersion that they they're trying to be really tasteful with it. You know, they want it to be there so the people who back the Kickstarter can enjoy it, but they don't want to ruin the base game. So that that's something good to hear from them. I've never played a Kickstarter game where I've had that level of immersion breaking before, but apparently it has happened. So I'm glad that they've addressed it. You know, I wasn't even something I was thinking about, but it's good to know that they're on top of it. And just one little tidbit from the comments section that got me really excited was they were talking about how robust the uh, stretch goals are and that we would be really excited uh, if we could see them all, which I, uh, I, you know, I'm going to be disappointed, unfortunately, probably no matter what, because I don't know if we'll meet every single stretch goal they have, but I want us to so badly. Oh, uh, I'll be, I'll be sad if there's like a, a cool stretch goal or two that we just don't quite reach. Oh, uh, I really do hope we re we meet all of them. I really do. Cause I hate the idea of a, of a character not being playable or, you know, anything of that nature. Right. So, uh, so I, I'm really hoping that we can meet all of them if, if possible. And it was very curious, you know, to know, you know, how, how this Kickstarter will do in terms of its like overall trajectory. I'm like, oh, I know it's, you know, Kickstarter is notoriously, you get a lot of donations the first few days and a lot of donation the, the last few days. So I looked up the Bloodstain Kickstarter cause you know, it's a former Konami developer, you know, a storied franchise etc cetera, etc cetera. so i thought it might give a good base and you know based off what i could find we're very much following a similar trajectory to the bloodstain kickstarter so far in fact we're doing a tiny bit better that kickstarter ended with 5.5 million in funds raised and if we keep going the way we are we could end up you know somewhere roughly the same maybe even a little bit more maybe somewhere between you know 5.9 6.1 million raised so i think i think that's pretty cool so obviously there's a lot of room left to grow here and i'm excited to see what we how far we get one of the one of the things i noticed with the stretch goals is you know as you can see in the main character art for this game you know this character here was revealed to be a stretch goal character and I immediately thought, I'm like, why is a character in the key art a stretch goal character? And I think this girl here is a stretch goal character as well. Um, so if we just scroll up really quick. Ah, so Periel is the blonde in the key art there that I was just looking at. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Hildy is the character standing beside one of the main protagonists and yeah I, i'm pretty confident that this is hildy because she's described as being you know our dude's right hand right hand man right so I, I was why are why are characters in the key art kickstarter characters and and there was pretty much an you know there was an explanation for it and essentially it's they only have so many characters drawn at this point they have only so many characters kind of planned and fleshed out at this point out of a hundred and they wanted to have the Kickstarter characters, you know, they wanted to have, you know, art of them and they wanted to have story details for them. So it's not to say that these characters wouldn't have been in the game. They just probably would have been, you know, you know, sub side characters that didn't have an active role in your party. They would have been in the plot, but just not recruitable. Right. So that that seems like a good way of kind of, you know, explaining what was going on there, because I was very curious what that what that all meant and i was it was very confusing for me initially but they explain it quite well so i i can understand that they want to have something to show for the stretch goals and it makes it more cool because we got obviously um you know our girl here and then we got eupharius the seventh who I'll, who i'll cover uh in a little bit here and another great thing that's come out in the last few days is this is really far in the future uh, but I can't help but think about it already, is there has been at least thought of sequels. Murayama has said he would love to expand the world via sequels. That's part of the, you know, the appeal of creating games like this. But obviously he's super focused on doing a good job with this game first, which he should be. But it's nice to know that it is in their consciousness that they potentially want to make a franchise of this. So it just makes me even more excited for the first game to see what we get with it. In terms of gameplay, there's been a lot of new details as well. You know, war battles are confirmed for the game. We have no idea what they look like at this point, but you know, the in the comments section, someone asked if we would get a look at them before the Kickstarter was over. And you know, the moderator replied that they would ask Mariyama-san 
for us. So here's hoping that we do get to see what the war battles look like. There's been a lot of requests for the war battles to look like Suikoden 2 and to expand upon them. And I think pretty much by and large, they are the favorite war battles of the entire franchise. Like one was pretty rudimentary. Um, three people didn't like, obviously, because it's just your characters and you actually don't have a squad of soldiers. Four, I think the naval battles were fairly universally panned by a lot of people. And then five was getting a little bit more back to form, but... Once again, I think some people found them particularly chaotic, but uh, I actually didn't mind five. I thought it was a, I thought five's battles were a step in the right direction for sure, especially after three and four. And Mariyama Sun in an interview also stated that the game will be roughly 40 hours, which is a more than respectable length for a JRPG, not too short, not too long. And he said, if you are a completionist and you want to recruit all of the characters and do all the side quests, and let's face it, it's sweeping again, we're going to get all the characters. That's the whole appeal of the speaking game is getting all the goddamn characters. Um, it's going to be a longer experience. So that's great. You know, and it, and it, you know, that's, that's all I need it to be. Um, it's just a, you know, a classic full JRPG experience. Voice acting is also in the game, which is something that I'm not surprised about. It, it will probably obviously just for the, be for the main story beats. I can't see all side conversations and stuff like that being fully voiced that just be an astronomical task so no full probably fully voiced main story which i'm totally cool with i just hope we get the japanese audio option as we all know english voice acting can be very hit or miss they can't all be as good as final fantasy 7 remake so i'm pretty sure that will be an option so i'm looking i'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it plus mariyama son has also gone on record saying that he wants duels to be in this game and i and i loved the duels in the uh, this weekend in franchise uh, i especially like how flashy they got especially in weekend in five um no they're definitely you know would be part would be appropriate for its spiritual successor and that the same thing goes for character portraits maria amazon very much wants to fit them into the user interface of the game and i really hope he does uh, i love seeing character portraits because i just enjoy looking at the character for characters honestly and if you look at the Legend of Heroes series, for example, you know, as they got more advanced with their graphics, they abandoned the character's 3D portraits, which I really miss. I just, the character art is so good a lot of the time in games like this that it, I, I just like any excuse to look at it. So I, I, I hope that is something that they will add to the game. And I feel like if Mariama really wants to, that it will be. So here's hoping. And speaking of character portraits during dialogue, a lot of people have been requesting more party interaction, and now we have a stretch goal for it. And it's the next stretch goal to meet, actually. So Words with Friends party conversations at 2.7 million will probably actually reach that at some point today, I would say. It had the... You know, the funding has slowed down a lot in the last couple of days, but once again, we're, we're heading into the middle part of the Kickstarter, so that's not too surprising. But if we don't reach Words with Friends today, we'll definitely reach it tomorrow. So people will have that requested feature, more party conversations, and that's awesome. Um, I did a review for Trials of Mana, and, you know, one of my complaints with that game is I could have just had more character interaction between the main characters i like the characters and i wish they would just talk to each other more and i felt like it was a missed opportunity on that game's part so i love the fact that that is a stretch goal just having conversations between your characters and having such a a like a wide-ranging cast filled with very different and strong personalities you're going to have some unique and hilarious conversations taking place and i can't wait it just makes the game more endearing and it makes the characters more special and it makes you theorize about you know character relationships and all that and the type of people that would be good friends and you know maybe unlikely friends and and stuff like that so oh just eating that shit up i love the fact that they're doing uh you know character conversations and another thing that has been requested by players and it's a staple of the GRP genre is a world map. And that has been confirmed. Mariyama san has said that there will be a world map in this game. So awesome. Couldn't be happier about that. And unlike the other Suikoden games where movement was very much like up, down, left and right, or north, south, east and west or whatever, there will be diagonal movement in this game, uh, which wasn't something I thought about, but people were asking and it was confirmed. So there you go. So one of the things that has me most excited is the new game plus mode. And they described it in the latest update. So the thing that they say is the game will be much more difficult, which is fucking awesome. A lot of people complained about Suikoden's lack of difficulty. But honestly, Suikoden's lack of difficulty never really ruined it for me at all. 
Uh, but it's nice to know that there will be that option and it will make the game more fun. Absolutely. Uh, and it says here that, you know, attack patterns for existing bosses will change, stuff like that. So you're definitely going to be learning new things. And then it says naturally new game plus wouldn't be complete without the ability to carry over your characters from your previous game. I hope to God that means that we start the game with all characters already recruited. And then we can just use all the characters right out of the bat from the very beginning of the game. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. It could just mean that your characters are imported in terms of when you recruit them or when you recruit them in the game, they might just have their, you know, their rune lenses, their equipment and their stats, which is cool. But I really hope it just means we get all the characters right out of the gate. I mean, how nice would it be to to start the game right away with your favorite characters. How great would that have been in the original Suikoden series? Perfect example, Suikoden 4. Uh, Rachel was my favorite character. I love spear wielders. I love redheads. So, you know, I thought she was great, but you get her at the very end of the game. And in Suikoden Tactics, she's actually one of the first characters you recruit, and that actually made the game much more enjoyable for me. So I just imagining going through 4 and having her right away, oh, that make the experience so much better. So I'm really hoping that's what they're saying. I haven't seen confirmation one way or the other that that is the case or not. If you guys know, definitely let me know because I would love to know if they actually mean we're going to have all of the characters that we've recruited right out of the gate. Oh, that'd be so fucking great. Oh, it'd be amazing. Yeah, so let's, let's take a quick second and just go through the stretch goals that we've met so far. So we, meet the, we met the minimum goal of 500,000. Fortress mode has been added to the game, which is not shocking at all super key too. a one on many fronts all the consoles are unlocked great more people that play and buy this game the better better chance of getting a goddamn sequel culinary skills abound cooking mini game awesome a staple of the this the original Suikoden franchise as well new game plus which i just covered the sounds of war new sound effects no problem with that at all um chinese localization the guild system that had been detailed, I'm I'm sure that there will be more details about that soon, but once again, it's just another way to enjoy the game, right? It makes it more robust. Periel joins the ranks as well, 1.8. I very much like the sound of her character, very much the cute exterior, but very much sassy at the same time. Looking forward to seeing what she's like. Fishing minigame, I actually really enjoy fishing minigames in, uh, in JRPGs. I like the one in The Legend of Heroes, so totally cool. Generally... You get some pretty cool rewards from doing them too. And they're not like too complicated or whatever. So yeah, nice little touch. Okay, stay out of the water. Eupharius the seventh joins. Let's look at this guy. So well, let's, you know, Perio Grum looks good. Nothing wrong with that character art whatsoever. Um, are those apples falling or levitating? That, that, because it doesn't look like she's dropping them. Maybe she was like had her dress folded to carry fruit. I have no idea, but I uh, that's something that occurred to me right away. So I guess we'll see. No, nope, like her. Okay, this motherfucker. Okay, Eupharius the Seventh. Okay, even if you don't like the look of the character, um. By the way, I you know he he has grown on me for sure. I'm not like look at his weapon. I've always been a fan of like the the spiked ball and chain, like the Morning Star weapons. I just want this guy's sprite to be just him standing there and him just like freaking whipping it over his head. A great great white shark running at you on land with that sucker coming at you. Oh, I just I, I really hope that's what his sprite does. But no. Even if you're not excited by this character, you have to be excited by what he represents. And very much, I thought the Beastman in this game would just be, you know, like the character we saw already, just kind of like a wolf-like race. And when they had this guy teased in the stretch goals, I thought it was just going to be, you know, another wolf-type Beastman with like maybe an eye patch or some shit, right? But no, this guy opens the fucking floodgates in terms of what beastman characters can be they could be literally anything now like think of your favorite animal and it could be a beastman we could have you know lion kin we could have freaking you know dragon beastman lizard men pretty much anything you can think of now they they can do um so no i'm just excited by what this guy represents and what he means for beastman in this game 
And Mariyama Sun's already said that there are more Beastman characters planned. People have been asking for like maybe some female Beastman characters, which I think could be really cool aesthetically speaking too. But no, even if you don't like the character, how he looks, I actually really like him. I'm really looking forward to seeing actually what his sprite looks like. Um, you you got to be excited by what he represents. Absolutely. Because what makes Sea Weekend so great, partly, is just everything that was in it. Like the original game, we had elves, dwarves, ninjas, dragon knights, dark knights, fucking ev- warrior villages, vampires. Like fucking everything. And I, and I very much like the direction they're going because it's very much going in that, well, that same direction. You know, so like the more the more diversity with that shit, the better. You know, I, I I love the the diverse types of characters they have and races in this game, because uh, they've said elves, humans, beastmen, desert people, whatever that means. So no, you you gotta love him for what he represents. And next we have Total Need Freak Hildy joins. I'm pretty sure that's the girl to the right of Sign Kessling in the character art. I could be wrong, but she's wearing the same military uniform, so I would bet that that's her. So no, she looks pretty cool. Looking forward to seeing what she looks like. She'll probably be in the character update this week, along with uh, the Honest Soldier Maxim, which uh, I'm looking forward to seeing as well. Yeah, because we're, we're, we'll hit 105 characters for sure. Absolutely. I think we're going to get a, hit 108 probably. If not more, I would say we'll probably hit more than 108 characters, depending on where they placed them in the in the uh, in the stretch goal list. But it seems to be at least for every few stretch goals, there's a there's a new character involved. So, let a rip top battle mini game. Uh, no real details on what that looks like. So once again, another mini game. Sweet, didn't had a ton of them. Looking forward to seeing it. Korean localization as well. Happy for you, Korean players out there. Real brass, full orchestra. That is fucking cool full orchestrated music is always so good you know you look at the the dragon quest franchise like with 11 they didn't have the full orchestrated soundtrack in the original release and now it's coming out later and it just sounds better you know dragon quest 8 the original game full orchestra sounds amazing 3ds virgin not full orchestra and it doesn't it just doesn't sound as good so i'm really happy they have the full orchestra in there words with friends party conversations we covered we'll probably hit that today the pretty soldier Melor joins. So she's described as a magical girl. Will she be this type of magical girl? Probably not. But any excuse to show, show the best sailor scout. Jupiter was the best scout. I'll, I'll fight you if you disagree. I'll fight you. And then lastly, we have uh, economy of scale. And the thing that comes to mind with economy of scale was the trading posts in Suikoden 3. I feel like it might be a little bit more robust than that, but we'll have to just wait and see. And that's and that's it for stretch goals at this moment. But just to yeah, and then obviously we got it. We got a, we got a ton more room. Oh, I'm just I'm so curious what they have, but I'm kind of glad they don't show them all at once. Because if they show like a dozen or so Kickstarter goals and we don't reach them, I'll, I'll always know what we didn't get for the game. So I'm kind of happy they're only doing them a few at a time. Because even if we only miss a couple. We won't, I'm hoping we won't see the rest. So uh, there is that. But no, um, once again, really happy with this Kickstarter so far. Very excited with what, with everything they've shown. And I plan on doing an update like this probably every week or so. Definitely do one next week and the week after that. There might be a bit of a stretch between the third and fourth update because I'll wait until the Kickstarter is finally done for the final update. Let me know what you guys think of the Kickstarter so far. Are you really optimistic like I am? Are you a little more reserved? Like, let me know what you're excited about. What do you want to see in this Kickstarter for stretch goals? And what do you think the the final number will be? Do you think we'll be over six million? Do you think we'll be, you know, between five and a half and six? Like, where do you think this Kickstarter is going to end at? Uh, my My estimation is uh, I'm, I'm going on the optimistic side of things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 6.1. I'm going to say we're going to end at 6.1 million. But uh, no, that's it for now. And just, hey, guys, you know, we fucking did it. Like, you know, all of us Suikin and fans out there, we got this game funded. You know, it sounds like the team's done a great job. And I'm just, I'm just happy for all of us. You know, something great to look forward to. It's just fucking awesome, honestly. Um, but no, I'll be back to cover more news on this soon. Uh, looking forward to seeing more character reveals probably this week and, you know, dive into all that juicy shit with you guys. But anyway, take it easy, stay safe out there. And, uh, thanks for joining me for another game break guys. See you later.